Today we're going to learn about classes. And classes are essentially a way where we can group data in, in such a way that we can interact with that data as well. You'll notice we use terms like method, fields, and attribute and things like that, which describe the same data that we've been using, for example, an integer or floating point, but now in the context of what is known as a class. So let's take a look at what we're going to learn. And the first thing we're going to learn is be able to create a new class of a given name. So whenever we create a class, we actually create a new data type. And that way there it can hold different pieces of information, different types, different functions, things like that. And a class is self-contained in which we can actually interact with that data at using one of those member functions. We're going to be able to write a constructor that takes zero more parameters. And a constructor, as you'll see, is a way where we can initialize. Whenever we create the data type, we want to give it some sort of basis, some sort of initialization. So for example, whenever we create an integer like a equals 10, it's going to take the value 10. But if we create a new class or a new data type based on that class, we want it to have some sort of meaningful input just from the start. We'll be able to use what's called the self parameter, and we'll see what that looks like inside there. Understand the difference between a variable and a member variable. So a variable, once we, is what you've been using so far, a equals 10, things like that. Whenever we have the term member in front of it, it means it belongs to a class. Understand how to access members within and without a class, so outside of a class and inside of a class. Be able to create instance and use a class, and then be able to conditionally execute code using name. So this last learning objective really does not have anything to do with a class, but it has to do with what's called a module. Remember when we did import math, you imported a module. However, we wanted to be able to use those certain functions inside that module. However, Python allows you to have any different type of Python file to execute but it runs all of the code that's inside of there. So if I have testing code, it's going to be printed to the screen if we don't turn it off. And I'll show you how to turn it off. So in this case, a class is create what's called an object. And you can think of an object as just a circle with things inside of it. So for example, that I give inside of here, we use an ATM machine. In an ATM machine, we can have certain bank accounts, we can have certain bank accounts with bank account money inside of those, and we want to be able to withdraw or deposit from that bank account. And we also want to be able to check the balance. And so if you can take a look at here, we use the syntax CLASS class, and then we give it a name. So as, as you saw, we actually create a new data type, and we have to give that data type a name. In this case, it's going to be capital ATM. And notice the little colon comes after there, just like an if statement, just like a loop. And then after that, we have these def. So remember, that's how we create a function. And we're actually creating a function inside of a class. So just like math.sign or something like that, now we have atm.withdraw, atm.deposit, things like that. And so you'll notice this is a special function, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And then in parentheses, notice all member functions have self. That's how we can refer to the whatever memory these can, because we're creating a new data type, we have to know where in memory these data, the actual data is stored. And because we only have one class, we can have multiple instances of that class, and we want to be able to refer to the correct data. So in this case, I create init, that's what's called your constructor, that's special in Python. Python knows that if you do underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, it knows that this is your constructor. And so as soon as I create a new class or a new data, a new variable of that class, we're going to run, or Python will run for us, in it. And that constructs us a new class. As you can see, what my function is going to do, it's going to set balance to 100.75. So as soon as I create the class, our balance is going to be $100.75. Then what I do underneath that is create a member function, also called a method, called withdraw. And then you'll notice that self follows every single one of these. Why? Because notice when I do self.mbalance. What I'm saying is go to the memory address that this points to, create a new variable called mbalance, and set it equal to 100.75. And the reason we do that, once again, is because I can have multiple instances of this class. I can have ATM in the Chicago location. I can have ATM in the New York location. And we don't want to mix those two up. And so we use the self parameter because we're always going to be able to withdraw, check the balance, and deposit but I want to keep them differentiated using what's called the self object. And the self just refers to where's the location that all this information is stored. So we have to use self. And then notice I can have additional parameters outside of here. Now here's the thing. Let's take a look at def main down here. Notice I create a new class by saying whatever variable name I want equals, and then the class's name followed by parentheses. This is how we're going to create a new class. And remember, Python after line 12 will automatically call 
the constructor, the underscore underscore in it. And so by doing line 12, I already have $100.75 in my account. Wouldn't that be nice? And so in this case, we do myATM.deposit25. And so what that's going to do is my ATM dot, that's called the member access operator, or also colloquially, colloquially known as the dot operator. And what that says is, okay, okay, go to this variable's memory location and call deposit. Essentially, it's a way so that this self right here gets whatever variable we're referring to. Notice I do not specify self inside the parameter list. Instead, Python automatically populates self with whatever is in front of the dot. So hopefully that makes sense is that, remember, self is necessary, so they had to put it somewhere. And so it's always the first parameter for all your member functions. However, Python will automatically put it in there because it knows what variable we're referring to because you use the member access operator, the dot operator. Okay, and so we're gonna pass 25 decimal zero zero, and that's gonna go into our amount right here. I'm sorry, deposit, there we go. And that's gonna go into our amount right there. So what I've done inside my deposit function is I've said, okay, go to the exact same class that this refers to and withdraw a negative amount. So it's essentially depositing that amount. And so what's going to happen is we have negative 25 going into this location right here, and then the self is just being copied over here. And if you'll notice, self.mbalance was 100.75, but we're going to set it to 100.75 minus whatever the amount is. Well, remember, it's a negative amount, so essentially we're going to add the amount into it. So we're going to get 125.75. We added $25 into it. And if we print that to the screen, I deposit 25 cents, and then we get the balance. So let's take a look at the balance right here. Once again, the self parameter is going to be automatically populated by Python. And then we're going to get self.mbalance. So saying, okay, go to the variable my ATM and get me whatever the M balance is. Now you'll notice that I used lowercase m balance. And the reason I did that is because take a look at line eight. You'll notice that we have a balance function. Well, everything has to have a name that is unique. And that goes for in classes, both functions and the member variables themselves. Otherwise, it's ambiguous. Python would have no idea which one you're referring to. And so for all my member variables that I use, also known as fields, I put a dot or I put an, a lowercase m and then whatever the name is. The lowercase m stands for member. And it's just a way to keep all the member variables separate from the member functions. And it's easy to identify. If you so, see something that looks weird like this, okay, you know it's a member variable. Now that's not required in Python. The only thing that's required in Python is that they have different names. Just make sure that they have unique names. So let's take a line, look at line 15. We do the same thing, we withdraw 100. So what's gonna happen is self is gonna get populated with my ATM. And then amount right here is going to get 100. And so we take self.mbalance, which is $125.75, and we're gonna subtract 100 from there. So I'm left with 25, dollars and 75 cents. And so let's take a look at what actually printed to the screen when I run this code. I deposited $25, so now I have 125.75. So as you can see, whenever we call balance, this self, the M balance that we keep using is referring to the, the exact same variable that we wanted to use. Without using self, that would not be the case as I show you an example later. So once again, just to review what we covered, the init right here is called the constructor. It's a special function that Python recognizes and it's automatically called, it's automatically runs whenever we create a new instance of a class. So remember in this case, ATM is the name of the class. To create an instance of it, I use parentheses and that's telling Python, hey, I don't want you to actually copy the class. I want you to actually instantiate the class. That means give memory to whatever's in that class, okay? And then whenever we do that, Python's gonna call the constructor and my constructor that I wrote is going to set the balance to $100.75. So let's take a look down here. Notice we do have self. Once again, the self refers to the object that we're looking at. We can have multiple instances of the ATM and we wanna make sure that we are on the particular instance that we are referring to. And remember, we do that with the dot operator, also known as the member access operator. And the way we do that is it becomes the name of the variable dot and then whatever the member is. And this can be a member function or a member variable. In fact, we have access to M balance. We can set the balance directly. However, typically we do not want to do that because we use these what are called member or these member functions as getters and setters. And that way there we can error check to make sure that you don't withdraw too much or something like that. Now I didn't do that in here, but typically we don't want to mess with the member variables directly. We want to me mess with the getters and setters, the functions that actually set and get those, those values. 
So there are a lot of terms that are being thrown out here, initialize, instantiate, objects, things like that. And it's just going to take a couple of readings of this just to get acclimated to what we're talking about. And just know that an object is what we look at. It's just basically the square in memory, okay? Something in memory that takes up these pieces of information. And a instantiation is, a, is just a, a synonym for an object. It's just, okay, we have this class. Right now, as, as if you look at your screen, this is just a blueprint. It doesn't really do anything until we actually do line 12, until we put memory to the actual class. That's when we actually have calculations being performed. Because once again, this is just what Python, it's a blueprint for Python. What happens when we create a class, that sort of stuff. And we actually create the class here on line 12. So let's take a look at accessing members. Now in here, notice I took out self dot. So we're not accessing any member. This is known as just a normal variable that you've created before. A equals 10, B equals 30. Except in this case, I say M balance equals zero. And so this is local, just like your other variables, to withdraw. And so in this case, we can't use balance, this M balance outside of it. And so notice nothing changes. We always have $100.75. It's because we're not referring to the actual variable, the member variable that we want. In fact, this we can detect that this is not a member variable because there's no self dot in front of it. If it was self dot M balance, then we would actually change the member variable. Because remember, members belong to a class. We can actually look at the instance of that class by using self. Because there's no self in it, it's just a local variable at this point. So we talked about the self parameter, hopefully that's clear, but self just refers to this particular class in memory. And once again, I can't stress it enough, we can have multiple instances, multiple locations that are all of the same class. Once again, like Chicago's ATM machine versus New York's machine, uh, ATM machine, things like that. So let's take a look at this function that we've done. We modified the init function so that it actually takes a parameter. So we don't want to just initialize with $100.75. We want to initialize with whatever you give us. So in this case, notice we have one parameter that's going to go into initial underscore balance. This initial balance is a default parameter to $100.75, but because I'm specifying it here on line 12, it's going to overwrite the $100.75 and give me $2,000.10 even better. And so in this case, we set the M balance to the initial balance, the $2,000. And so what we're going to do is the exact same thing for withdraw balance and deposit. And whenever we do this, notice we have $2,025 in 10 cents because we added $25 to it. And then whenever we subtract $100 from it, we have 1925.1. And so that makes it very easy so that we can access these different members inside of our class. And notice, even with that, we use self dot m balance. Well, why don't we use self over here? Well, that's because initial balance is a parameter that is passed into our constructor. So it's not actually a member of the class. It's just input into the particular function, in this case, our constructor function. So let's take a look at the last thing that we're going to cover here, the if name stuff. Now, you've probably seen this in your Zybooks already, but may not know exactly what's going on. So let's take a look at what we've got over here. So anything can, can be called a test, or I'm sorry, a Python script. So in this case, we say if name equals main, then we typically run a function called main, okay? So this differs now that everything is compartmentalized inside of a function. We didn't do it before because we didn't know what functions were. Now we can compartmentalize even the main code that we want to run inside of main. And the reason we do this is because if I did not have this portion right here, we would always run main. And what happens is Python recognizes this name, this underscore underscore name, almost like underscore underscore in it. It recognizes this as a special variable and Python will actually put the name inside there. If you are running this script directly, like if I press F5 and hit enter right here, it runs the script directly. And what's going to happen is Python will say, this is the main script and we'll put underscore underscore main inside of that variable. And notice it's just a string. However, I can do something like import my file, okay? As long as it's myfile.py, it's going to import that file. However, Python will not give that the main because that is not the main script that's running. And so it'll have a different main name. In fact, it'll be my file. And the reason we do that is because we can write modules that other people can use from us. For example, someone wrote the math module, it would be something if every time I ran the math module or imported the math module, it ran code. 
What if I don't want it to run? There's nothing I can do about it. And so what we do is we make our code as general as possible, as useful to everyone. If we run it as the main script, we can have it run our test cases just to make sure that the module is working properly. However, if we don't want that to happen, we can use this if name equals main to suppress it. Okay, because we will only execute this main, we could also call this our test function. So we would only run the test function if we are the main script. That means this, we are running this one directly and we're not importing it. And what that does is allows us to have multiple, multiple files that we can import, so we can import the blueprint of the class, things like that. I'll show you an example down here. If we create atm.py, which is the ATM machine that we created, we can actually now access the class by saying atm.atm, .atm, much like math.sign, things like that. And if we did a dir, which gives you a directory of all the members inside there, you'll notice there's our withdraw, there's our deposit, there's our balance, and there's our init right here. Now these other ones will be populated by Python automatically. You can actually change some of these but we won't get into those in this class. So just to give you a little insight of what this is, is if we compare two ATM objects, LE stands for what happens if they're less than or equal to. And so you actually get to write how to compare to two different ATM modules. Once again, we're not gonna hit that with this class, that's more advanced Python, but there you go. And so notice that if I take off the if name equals main, and then I import ATM like I did here, my test case run. Well, could you imagine if the test cases for math ran automatically? How would you suppress that output? You couldn't. So instead, if we add back in the if name equals main, it just runs what I want outputted. It gives me the blueprint of the ATM to execute the code, and then it executes when I want it to run. And that's really the only thing that we're going to do. So if you take a look at this, many of your Zybooks will actually import your code as a module and then run what's called a unit test on top of it. If you don't have this, it's not going to work properly. So always double check to make sure that this is inside of your code before running. So let's go ahead and double check our learning objectives, make sure we've got everything. We want to be able to create a class of a new class of any name. So remember, it's the keyword class followed by whatever name you want, followed by a colon, much like a function, much like a loop, things like that. We want to be able to write a constructor that takes zero or more parameters. So remember, the constructor is underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And it always takes a self parameter, and it's just a function. If I wanted to add uh, parameters, I would just put commas in whatever parameters I want. We can even do the keyword arguments, or we can either do the list arguments, the positional arguments. Be able to write a member function that takes the self parameter. Well, we've done that for withdraw, deposit, and balance. Notice that whenever we use the member access operator, the dot operator, self will automatically be populated by Python with whatever memory address that instance takes in memory. Understand the difference between a variable and a member variable. If we have the adjective member in front of it, it tells you it belongs to a class. It's either a member function or a member variable. Understand how to access members within a class. We can do self dot and then understand how to access members outside of a class. We did that down here where we said my ATM dot deposit. So if we are building it inside the class, we use the self parameter. If we're doing it outside the class, we use whatever variable name we gave it. And this allows us to have multiple instances once again of each class. Class. Be able to create an instance and use a class. Well, that's as simple as doing the name of the class followed by parentheses. If our constructor takes parameters, we can put the parameters inside of the parentheses. But for this first one that we did here, it didn't take any parameters, so we leave the parentheses blank. And then be able to conditionally execute testing code by checking name. And that leads us all the way down to the bottom, why we do this. So once again, if I leave this off, we always run the code and most things must have a testing code so that you can test to make sure that the functionality of what you did is correct. But we want to suppress that whenever I import like the math module because you will be able to write your own modules in this case. Like I did here, I wrote my own ATM module. Well, I don't want the test code like we have here to run. How do I suppress that? I can't. And so whenever we use the if name equals main, we can suppress test code if that is not the case. And so that is classes in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.